ओके वेलकम टू द इलेवेंथ लेक्चर ऑफ मकैनिक्स ऑफ मशीनिंग टिल नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस्ड दैट हाउ वी कैन इस्टिमेट द कटिंग फोर्सेज वी डिस्कस सम मैथमेटिकल मॉडल्स नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस हाउ वी कैन मेजर द कटिंग फोर्सेज बिकॉज यू हैव टू वेरीफाई मोस्ट ऑफ द एनालिटिकल मॉडल्स मे नॉट यू यू वेरी एक्यूरेट रिजल्ट दे आर फोर मेजरमेंट इज मस्ट सो इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट मेजरमेंट ऑफ द कटिंग फोर्सेज मेजरमेंट ऑफ कटिंग फोर्सेज ड्यूरिंग सर्टेन कटिंग कंडीशन इज यूजफुल फॉर रेशनल एंड इकोनॉमिक डिजाइन ऑफ मशीन टूल इफ यू वॉन्ट टू डिजाइन मशीन टूल यू मस्ट नो हाउ मच फोर्सेज आर कमिंग सो दैट्स वाई वी मस्ट फाइंड आउट सम इस्टिमेट ऑफ द फोर्सेज यूजली दियोरिटिकल मॉडल्स मे नॉट बी एक्यूरेट दैट्स वाई समटाइम्स द मेजरमेंट मे बी नेसेसरी इट आल्सो हेल्प्स द डिजाइनर इन डिसाइडिंग हाउ ए मशीन शुड बी कंस्ट्रक्टेड विद द रिक्वेजिट सेट्स ऑफ डायमेंशंस एंड द पावर नेसेसरी टू ड्राइव द टूल एंड द मशीन टूल सो डिजाइनर कैन डिजाइन ही विल नो दैट कंस्ट्रेंट्स एंड ही कैन इवन डेवलप सम कंट्रोल सिस्टम ऑल्सो सो कटिंग फोर्सेज आर यूजली मेजर्ड यूजिंग डिवाइसेज कार डायनोमीटर्स वी हैव कटिंग फोर्स मेजरिंग डायनोमीटर्स दीज डिवाइसेज मे यूज सम बॉन्डेड वायर रेजिस्टेंस स्ट्रेन गेजेज इन स्ट्रेन गेजेज वी हैव गॉट सम स्ट्रेन विच आर गेजेज विच आर सम वायर्स एंड दे आर रेजिस्टेंस चेंजेज बाई चेंज इन देंथ सो यू कैन गेट इस्टिमेट ऑफ this one because force will produce some strain that strain can be measured as a change in the resistance of the wire some basic method for measuring the force using strain gauges are presented in the following series of slides but actually there are many other methods also so let us discuss first the measurement of the forces by means of the strain gauges consider that there is a axially loaded member this is some member and in which some force has been applied on both sides now you want to measure this force so it is a very simple method in 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 this this is a bar it will be um, uh, it can be put in tension or compression so suppose we are putting the force like that then in the strain gauges 1 and 4 which are aligned in this direction strains will be e1 is equal to e4 will be equal to f divided by a multiplied by e f is the force applied a is the cross sectional area and e is the young's modulus of elasticity because f by a is stress uniaxial stress and if you divide it by e you get strain so we got these two type of strains here but as we know that if we have got a longitudinal strain then because of the poisson effect there will be transverse strain also so that's why this transverse strain is given like this e2 is equal to e3 that will be minus nu nu is the poisson ratio this is the f by ae nu the value of the poisson ratio is limited between actually theoretically between minus 1 and 0.5 but practically it is generally between 0 to 0.5 that means you cannot have a poisson ratio more than 0.5 and for most of the meters this value is actually positive okay although theoretically it can be negative also and some people have constructed such type of materials so here that transverse strain along this direction e2 and e3 will be actually minus nu f divided by ae this uh, strains will be there now let us go to if we want to measure this uh, these forces so we can use one feet stone bridge type of circuit so for maximum sensitivity the strain gauges are arranged in the form of a feet stone bridge this is a feet stone bridge and here we are having this is 1 2 3 4 so in this way here we can measure the voltage across these two points and uh, then there is a this is a meter 
so gauge 1 and 4 the nasal axial strain so we have arranged here and here diagonally and 2 and 3 nasal the circumferential strain we have arranged it here and here then the strains are e1 equal to e4 is equal to f by a e and e2 is equal to a3 is equal to minus nu f by a e. So, uh, this then what happens that this effect will become additive if we have arranged like this then this effect will become additive. Suppose you instead of putting that this gauge 4 here if you put the gauge here then in that case you will not be able to measure uh, that may will, will show the same voltage here across this. So, difference will be 0. So, you have to arrange it properly and spring constant k s in this arrangement is given by k s is equal to a e by l. Now, we define one term called gauge factor. Gauge factor is equal to fractional change in resistance divided by strain. So, that means, suppose I change strain by one unit how much change is in the resistance. So, fractional change in resistance is basically change in the resistance that means fractional change means percentage that means delta r divided by r that is the fractional change and you divide it by strain. So, this value should be actually somewhat high because then only it will be sensitive. Suppose the force is changing too much, force has become double, but here there is only 1 percent change in the resistance, then you will have difficulty in the measurement. So, sensitivity should be high. Gauge factor for metallic strain gauges is about 2. Okay. So, that way it is like that. That means, if there is a uh, unit change in strain, then it is uh, fractional change will be 2 times of that. Now, here the this arrangement this type of arrangement ensures that the bridge output is insensitive to any loading other than f. Suppose there is a class loading etcetera then that effect will be minimized. It is assumed that the gauges are placed symmetrically if a bending load is applied the resulting additional strain in gauge 1 and 4 will have opposite effects and will cancel each other. This, this can get some bending load also, but because it is on one side of the axis and gauge 4 is on the other side of the axis. So, that is why that these effects will nullify each other. That means, one portion or uh, let us say one will be in tension and four will be in compression. So, there will be opposite effect. So, this will be nullifying each other. So, that is the also one point because other loads it should not be sensitive to other type of loads. So, uh, now suppose we make a cantilever beam type of structure. So, we can then measure the bending moment also. So, when the point of application of load is known the bending moment is converted into force. So, we can know the force also like that. So, we can measure the bending moment you know that if I fix a cantilever beam here on the left hand side and apply the load on this my right hand side, then in that case this there will be some deflection. But here at this point there is no strain because there is no stress maximum strain is actually very near to the fixed support and that will be proportional to uh, distance L and also it will be proportional to F q. So, if we know that this distance is small l then we can find out the force also. So, when the point of application of load is known the bending moment is converted into force. Now, this figure shows a cantilever beam with rectangular section its total length is l width b and height h is subjected to suppose force f q and there is another force also which is perpendicular to your screen this is shown in the side view there is a force Fp also. So, at a one time we want to measure two type of forces Fq and Fp say cutting force and maybe thrust force also. So, then we have arranged the gauges like this the when we apply Fq these two 1 and 4 will be subjected to tension and then these gauges 2 and 3 will be subjected to compression. So, we have to arrange them properly. 
So gauges 1, 2, 3 and 4 will measure F q whereas the gauges 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime and 4 prime will measure F p. So, here we have got total 8 gauges. Now, we put like this the gauges are connected to form 2 independent feet stone bridges for measuring F p and F q. So, we have arranged like this, this is 1 and 4 because they are having same type of strength. So, we have put on the opposite side so that the effect gets amplified and this is 2 and 3 and in between I am measuring the voltage. Similarly, this is another wheat stone bridge in which we have put the gauges 1 dash, 2 dash, 3 dash and 4 dash like this. Gauges are uh, mounted symmetrically and properly located with respect to neutral axis to ensure that the force components F p and F q can be measured independently. So, we may, uh, locate them like this. If you know, if we put the only suppose F q, then naturally it will produce uh, the stresses in this one top and uh, this side. Here also they may say some stresses may be produced, but here that effect will be nullified. So, that is why this stone feet stone bridge will measure only F q, other will measure only F p. So, measured strains are given like this strain will be E 1, E 2 e is equal to E 3 equal to E 4 and that will be 6 F q L divided by E B H cube that that way the strain will be coming here. So, this is the uh, formula because you, you have got uh, the moment at this point is actually F q into L. So, we have got suppose moment is F q into L that is the moment and then m divided by i into y that will do maximum strain on the surface. Now, what is i? i is the second moment of area that is 1 by 12 bh cube where h is the depth of this one this is h this is h and then b is the width in this direction it will be visible. So, this is the rectangular cross section. So, i is equal to 1 by 12 bh cube and y is equal to h by 2. You substitute these values here you will get this expression that is 6 f q l e b h square. Okay. So, we it means uh, that if the thickness is small if this thickness is small then you will have more strain if the length is more then also you will have more strain and it also depends on E and B in this manner. Okay. So, next uh, similarly E 1 prime, E 2 prime, E 3 prime, E 4 prime is equal to 6 F p L divided by E B H square where L is the distance of the gauges from the force end. So, that is what this has been done and these things have been arranged like this. So, then you can measure uh, because of the strain there will be change in the resistance as you know that for metals suppose the length increases then its resistance increases and if length is uh, decreasing then its uh, resistance decreases. So, that way we can do and uh, we can measure. So, then there can be other type of things also suppose we have rings actually. Na? So, we can measure the cutting force using rings actually because in this case you will be getting high ratio of sensitivity to stiffness that means actually they are very stiff also, but at the same time they give high sensitivity and they have adequate stability against buckling although they are very thin, but they will not easily buckle. So, this figure shows a thin metallic ring of mean radius r with thickness t and width b fixed at the bottom. So, this is thickness thickness of the ring is t and this width is b and we have put the strain gauges at these positions. You if you want to find out the complete analysis of that that how much will be deformation what will be the stresses you have to do 
analysis using maybe techniques of the strength of materials, but here we are not going in that detail. We are indicating that we have put the gauges like this one gauge is this side, other gauge is here, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime, these are at 39.6 degree from the vertical, this angle is shown here. Okay. Now, when the ring is subjected to normal force F q, that means vertical force F q, it deforms like this, as shown in this figure, it deforms, circular ring will become semi, uh, elliptical and it will become like this. So, inside of the ring is subjected to opposite state of strain from the outside. Okay. So, outside there is a different strain and inside it is opposite and uh, in this case there are four active strain gauges, they are located at 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay. So, this is uh, like this, the, this arrangement forms the uh, four arms of wheat stone bridge and we can measure the force F q. So, what happens that if you see this one, I will put one here and then I have put four there, uh, opposite side, this is outer side, this is outer side, one and four will experience the same type of strain. So, I have put here in the diagonal way and 2 and 3 will experience another type of strain. So, I have put it here and this one. Then, uh, uh, so this arrangement will help in the measurement of force F q and by thin ring elastic theory, it gives the strain in these cases which I am indicating by E 90 because at 90 degree from the vertical line, this comes out to be plus minus 1.09 F q into R E B T square. This thing actually has come from the elastic theory. In those books, you will get this type of expression. Here, we are not going to derive completely in detail, but here it shows that strain is proportional to F q and strain is also proportional to radius. That means, if you increase the radius, then the strain will increase and it is inversely proportional to thickness t. That means, thinner the ring, more strain will be there. It is inversely proportional to E also. That means, if the, we have got softer material, naturally strain will be more and it is proportional to B also. So, strains in the gauges 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime and 4 prime these are located at 39.6 degree from the vertical axis. At this time, the strains in these gauges will be nearly 0. That is why we have arranged it in this fashion. This has come by analysis that this has to be about 39.6 degree. Then you will be getting strain in this because at this time, we do not want any strain in these gauges because these gauges have been arranged to find out another type of force that is F p and there should not be cross sensitivity. That means, I am measuring that F p actual applied load is F p, but you are getting F q or you apply F q and you are getting F p. These type of things should not be there that is called cross sensitivity. That means, I am going to measure the vertical force, but even in the instrument which is measuring horizontal force, there also there is some deflection that type of thing should be minimized. So, we have decided that is why we decided precisely that this should be put at 39.6 degree. So, that strain will be 0 there. Now, when the tangential force F p is applied, suppose you apply the tangential force F p, then the ring will deform as shown in this second figure and the strain gauges are located at 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime and 4 prime. That means, at these locations, you will have, you will make the bridge. So, these uh, gauges will be there. So, here 1 prime, then 4 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, you have to arrange in this fashion. If you arrange in the different way, suppose you take 1 prime here, 4 prime here, then there will not be proper result. So, strain in the gauges 1, 2, 3 and 4 is 0 at this time. Here it is 0. So, in this, uh, and while the strain in gauges 1 prime, 2 prime and 3 prime and 4 prime is actually this E at 39.6 degree is given by plus minus 2.31 into 
is equal to f p r e b t square almost the same type of expression, but in the previous case this was 1.09 and here you are getting 2.31. So, in a way it is slightly more sensitive in in fact more than double strain gets uh, almost 2.3 times more. Okay. So, this uh, so this way we can measure. So, we can put two wheat stone bridges one can measure f p one can measure f q and we have arranged these bridges in such a fashion so that there should not be uh, pricing that means there should not be cross sensitivity that means force in one direction should not show any reading in the other heat stone bridge. So, this was strain gauge type of method which is used, but nowadays uh, instead of wire type of strain gauges people use piezoelectric type of crystals and other things you can use of course many other devices also we will discuss them uh, one by one. But first let us now come to the basic principles of measurement of cutting forces by dynamometers you got the strain uh, on the strain gauges and then because of the strain their resistance changed. But this is not enough resistance got changed fine and then after that you can measure the change in the voltage thanks to heat stone bridge because of heat stone bridge you are able to measure the change in the voltage that voltage can be calibrated means we can say 1 volt is equal to this much force if there is a change of 1 volt then it will be considered this much force and if it is 2 volt then it will be considered that it is uh, double the force like that we can make the arrangement. So, there are means lot of means steps lot of modules. So, this is explained in terms of this type of block diagram that means I this is uh, general principle not only for the measurement of force, but even for measurement of temperature etcetera. That means, we have a physical variable like force and temperature then what you need to do that you want to conversion in another suitable variable like deflection, expansion etcetera. Force how you will measure force? You can only measure the effect of the force. So, one effect of the force is what? That you can measure that what is the change in the length if I am putting the force in particular direction. So, that means that you will see force is doing deformation. I can measure that deformation because it is easy to measure the deformation right. You have to see the effect if in fact force is there then you apply on a moving body then it produces acceleration a physical to ma if you can measure acceleration you can know that what is the force because already you know the mass of that object. So, here in this case it is a static situation. So, we are measuring only the deformation and then we are doing conversion in another uh, suitable variable like deflection and suppose I want to measure temperature then I may measure that how much is the expansion of any rod and if by that I can find out that how much was the temperature because mole will be the temperature mole will be the expansion of the rod. So, this is called transducing stage that means this job that converting force to some a variable like deflection that is called transduction and the thing which does that type of uh, job is called transducer. So, you know that terminology transducer. Okay. So, measurement of the physical variable like force, temperature etcetera uh, as raw signal through appropriate sensor or transducer is done that is the first task. So, we say transducer and are sometimes people say sensor there is a very subtle difference about uh, sensor and transducer many times in many books actually they will use sensor and transducer um, interchangeably, but well there is some difference means sensor you can say is like a sense organ it is a complete thing it may include that uh, uh, complete uh, even the computer processing and all those type of things connected with that complete gadget we can call sensor whereas transducer we can say that part only which does this specific task 
that means converts force to deformation. So, we can say it is a transducer. We connect many other things, it becomes the sensor. Maybe we put some display and we can see those readings on the screen. If we put that complete thing, then it becomes sensor. Next step is what? You got this raw signal that we are calling raw signal, that means it converted, force got converted into deflection, but then this has to be amplified, rectified and it has to be filtered etcetera. Force got converted to deflection and maybe deflection in turn got converted to voltage like in strain gauge that deflection was there, it produces strain and therefore, it produced strain then it produced a uh, basically change in the resistance. So, we got some voltage that voltage may be very very small we can say that that voltage which we got. So, transducer is what transducer ultimately did the transduction of transduction of force to voltage we got some voltage right, but that voltage will be very small there was a change of the force of let us say 1 kilo Newton means 1000 Newton, but this got changed only by say let us say 0 0.01 millivolt. It will be difficult to measure such a small voltage. So, we have to amplify that, we have to do amplification that means somehow that 1 millivolt is amplified by 100 times. So, suppose there is 1 millivolt, it becomes 100 millivolt, then it may be you may have to do rectification, it may be AC also, but you want I want only the DC component you can put rectifier and then you can you may have to do filtration that means there may be some noise components some spikes etcetera you want to remove that you want that only some low frequency component should go such type of task you do then you put some filter there are some electronic filter etcetera. So, this type of job that means lot of electronics is there in this portion that voltage is there and then you have to do amplify you have to put filter this is called conditioning stage. So, conditioning stage is also very important part conditioning of the raw signal by amplification rectification filtering or stabilization etcetera for getting more accuracy. Then what you have to do condition signal has come, but you have to measure it you have to read it. So, you have to read it or you have to record it in your computer or you can put some data acquisition cable and it can uh, put that complete system. So, it can acquire the data. So, it can go in the computer, it can directly go in excel file such type of job you have to do that is called read out stage. So, in this stage reading the conditioned signal with visualization and storage in a suitable read out unit like we can see in the oscilloscope, we can see in a PC also nowadays we have that is computer and we can have other type of recorders. So, this one is the uh, this stage. Now, let us say working principle of tool force dynamometers that means concentrate on the transducer side. So, measurement of cutting forces by tool force dynamometer is based on three different principles that means measurement of elastic deflection of member subject to the cutting forces. I can put a cantilever beam type of structure see that how much it is deforming and I can know that uh, elastic deflection that also can be done and uh, this this is one job that is uh, uh, we can have uh, this one we can have something like that suppose there is a cantilever beam this cantilever beam is subjected to force f then there will be deflection at the free end and if this length is l then that deflection delta is equal to f l cube by 3 e i. So, very correctly you can measure the deflection also then also you can get one force in that that is also one method. There are some dynamometers uh, which will not measure the strain rather they will measure some deflection that is also can be one method. Another thing is that we can measure the elastic deformation by measuring the strain. So, we can find out the strain if we want to find out the strain then we have to focus in this area in the beginning that area 
and then we can also measure in certain situation measurement of pressure developed by the force. We can put the some load and we can make some what is the pressure that also can be measured. Maybe we can put even a pressure gauge also to measure that means we can put a hydraulic system type of thing put a force and then that produces force divided by area will be pressure and this can be done. Type of transducer depends upon how that deflection strain and pressure is detected and quantified which is more convenient for you this you have to consider. So, determination of cutting force through measurement of elastic deflection that was also attempted there are dial gauge type of dynamometers still in the market which measure they may not be very accurate, but they measure the forces. So, here we have put a cantilever beam its length is L and automatically when I am doing cutting then a cutting force is coming that force is downward that is P z we are indicating by P z because of that the tool has deflected because it is a cantilever type of structure. So, it has deflected. Now, in this case elastic members like cutting tool sank this is a cutting tool this portion is cutting tool then there is a sank here uh, you can say sank portion and then one piece holder this is a holder they all undergo elastic deflection. So, you have to consider the stiffness of all of them Maybe tool holder is very rigid it may have very small effect but one has to see that whether it is having a small effect or it is not having a small effect. So, this figure is showing how a turning tool elastically bends under the action of a large force component P z. Now, if you put a large amount of force only then you can see the deflection and you can maybe measure by putting simple scale, but when the deflection is small then you may have to do some amplification then only you can measure. So, this is one way now in this case so we have seen that we have put like this and then amount of deflection delta of the tool tip will be proportional to the force P z there is no doubt about that delta is P z L cube by 3 E i ok. So, we have got this factor ok this is a type of uh, indication about sensitivity L cube by 3 E i if I want that means for a small force I must get large amount of deflection I must concentrate on this parameter L cube by 3 i. If you increase the length it increases drastically suppose I double the length my sensitivity may increase by 8 times L cube 2 to the power 3 and E and i e is the Young's modulus of elasticity and i is the plane moment of uh, inertia that means planar moment of inertia that means second moment of inertia of the beam section. So, basically what we are getting that delta is proportional to P z. So, we can write delta is equal to K P z it is a spring type of equation and we can see it is something like a spring constant you know that this equation very well we used to write f is equal to k x ok x was the displacement and k is this one. So, in this case that uh, it is in this case uh, k is equal to but in this case this k is written in a uh, reverse way it is p z by delta is the stiffness that is 1 by k ok. So, be careful about this unit I have written delta is equal to k p z. So, k is basically um, that factor which is multiplied by with P z it is not really the stiffness it is opposite of the stiffness. Now, here so constant of proportionality so we see that delta and P z both are uh, proportional to each other and we can plot if we graphically if we do calibration means first you have to calibrate we have to see that uh, with known load we measure the deflection we understand the instrument what is the relation between the force and deflection. So, that process is called calibration after that you can use. So, we have to do calibration to correlate the signal delta with the response P z. So, I have got this type of things I took the measurement if I put the load of 50 I got the 
diffraction of 1 unit. Then I put 100, I got 2, then I put uh, 150, uh, then I put 200 unit force, I got this 4, then I put uh, like this. So, I have got uh, suppose 150 you got like this, then you can see that more or less it is a straight line. In fact, in this case it is a perfect straight line. In actual case it will not be perfect straight line. So, you will generally you would try to fit proper curve line. So, in this case suppose we have got this type of maybe by least square fitting I got this type of line straight line and then I can find out it is a slope, it is a slope it is tan alpha which is k ok this angle is alpha. So, now if I know some diffraction delta star I can find out that what is the corresponding force here that I have got suppose this one, but usually uh, when you have calibrated some uh, uh, graph like this, it is not a good idea to do extrapolation. That means, do not if you have done during calibration stage, you have fitted a straight line and that time you have gone from diffraction of 1 mm let us say to 4 mm, then you should not uh, subject it during your experimental condition that diffraction becomes 5 mm and you will extrapolate. Instead try that your diffraction should be limited between 1 and 4, otherwise already in calibration stage you take care. If you know that actual, if I know that my actual diffraction is going to be 4, I would try to have calibration from 1 to 5, so that I can get fair idea. So, this is very essential and this linearity is a good option because you will have same levels of accuracy and uh, uh, other ease, ease of measurement that is why we prefer like this. Now, let us uh, go to this one. So, slope of the line provides the value of constant k for machining under any specific condition the value of tool diffraction delta star is measured. I have measured this delta star and the corresponding value of the force P z is obtained from the calibration curve because already I have made a curve although in this case as I pointed out there is a small flaw that we are actually trying to do extrapolation, but supposing it is behavior remains straight line. So, this point goes here and this goes here and then it becomes like this delta star. So, this is equal to uh, is 250 and this one. Now, the different methods and transducers used for monitoring the elastic diffraction include what are the different methods and different type of transducers. Mechanically, we can measure the diffraction using a dial gauge. So, dial gauge type of dynamometers are still available and sometimes they are used also. They are somewhat cheaper, you can get in somewhat less price and it is, but it is generally applicable only for static diffraction or static force. It will not be very suitable for dynamic diffraction because if it is going rapidly. Suppose you have a dial gauge, suppose you have got a beam and in this beam you apply some force. So, first you put a force, maybe it will go some dynamic diffraction type of thing, but you know usually it is stop. You know that when you stand in a weighing machine, it says that in the weighing machine you stand and there is a wheel actually in the railway weighing machines and then the wheel stopped rotation, then only you should measure the weight because so that everything gets stabilized actually. Otherwise in the beginning suppose I just put my foot on the platform and I have uh, stood there and my weight has been applied all of a sudden, so diffraction may be more also. So, first it will go in the another uh, means with more diffraction, then diffraction will try to reduce, there will be vibrations and ultimately it will stop at that equilibrium position. In even in a spring, you, you hang a spring in your home if you want to do this experiment, put a load, you see that it will start vibrating and finally it will stop and this is thing. So, we want to do when it has this one. So, this type of mechanical measurement using diffraction is very suitable for static diffraction because the forces are not rapidly changing. 
with time and you can measure. But suppose the forces are changing with time, you applied some force here and then all of a sudden these uh, and then you change the direction of this one. So, actually it you will uh, not get the correct measurement. In fact, if I have a cantilever beam and I apply some load and keep changing its direction at a very high speed, then because of inertia it may not move at all and it will show you the zero type of heating. So, it will not be suitable because it is changing by the time it wants to go in that side suddenly the force has gone in opposite side. So, you are not seeing any change. So, dial gauge type of thing is only suitable for static type of deflection not very much suitable for dynamic. Then electrically you can measure various type of transducers we can have, we can have uh, uh, this is potentiometer, then we can have means, uh, means this is the mechanical part, mechanically it got converted to uh, displacement, but displacement has to be measured in some way. So, maybe displacement is taken another one and second transfer transduction is applied, one transduction was force got changed to deflection, another one is that deflection will get changed to voltage. So, deflection is that it is potentiometer. So, the voltage will be changed to potentiometer, then it will be um, so we can see that by potentiometer that means because in the potentiometer usually there will be resistance and with the change in deflection its resistance will change. Suppose I put a resistor like this and if I put a pointer here and I want to measure the voltage between this and this. So, if I deflect this pointer then effective resistance length will change and because of that voltage will change. So, potentiometer is one way, but I can because of the change in the deflection even capacitance can get changed. If you have got two capacitor plates and if I reduce the distance between those capacitor plates then also I can change the voltage. So, that is called capacitive pickup that means using capacitor or it can be inductive pickup that means changing of the inductance or it can be it is called LVDT that means linear variable differential transformation. So, LVDT is usually obtained in that there are it is basically a type of transformer I am making a very simplified sketch here suppose I put here some primary winding like this and I put here secondary winding like this and in between I put coal if the entire thing is symmetric then whatever voltage is here same voltage is coming here. So, you are seeing that difference between them is 0. Now, suppose this coal gets displaced it comes more on this side then you may get more voltage here because that magnetic coupling is there, there the voltage may reduce because coal portion has reduced. Then you will see the difference between the voltage and then you will get the idea how much uh, coal has moved. Okay. So, this type of technique is called linear variable differential transformer LVDT. So, it is uh, now the magnitude of uh, magnitude of cutting force can be accurately measured from elastic strain caused by a force shown in figure. That means, I can instead of measuring the deflection now I can measure the strains here. So, I can put strain gauges here the force P z produces proportional amounts of stresses as well as strains in an elastic member subjected to the force. So, a strain will be epsilon is this is well known Hooke's law epsilon is equal to sigma by a stress divided by a because there is only one stress there are no other stress in other direction and this is this can be written as sigma is basically there is a bending moment known. So, there is a pure bending assume that there is a pure bending and this becomes m y by i where y is the distance of the top fiber from the neutral axis. Neutral axis is midway in the rectangular section. So, m y by i, but i will say that this is m divided by i by y. So, i is what? i is the second moment of area that means uh, that is for rectangular section it is 1 by 12 bh cube. 
and uh, y is actually h by 2. So, these are dependent only on the geometry what type of cross section is there that means it is the parameter of geometry. So, i by y is called z and which is also called section modulus. So, this z is called section modulus ok section modulus. So, we can have section modulus. So, we have m z by e expression becomes very simple r we can say p z l i by y i by y and z both are same and this becomes k 3 p z k 3 is the proportional t constant that constant of proportional t is k 3. So, if psi 1 is strain sigma is stress m is the bending moment because of this force p z z is the section modulus i is the plane moment of inertia of the tool section y is the distance of surface from the neutral plane. So, middle is the neutral plane here this is the neutral plane top side there will be tension bottom side compression. So, y is the distance from neutral plane to the top surface and then you will get this one. So, when a strain gauge in the form of the wire or foil uh, is strained as shown in the figure that means when strain is there. So, it will be experienced by some wire this strain gauge you have properly bonded. So, it is you are seeing that we have put many wounds here. So, that the effective length of the this thing gets changed. So, resistance R changes as R is equal to rho L by A where L is the length of the gauge, A is the cross sectional area and rho is the resistivity of the gauge material. So, rho is the resistivity of the gauge material that this one R is the in ohm and uh, this is a uh, L is in meter A is in meter square then you can find out unit of rho and then gauge factor is defined as delta R by R. Delta R by R is means fractional change in the resistance. Suppose uh, it percentage change is 1 then fractional change will be 0 0.01 and this is epsilon uh, is the divided by epsilon that is called gauge factor. So, this gauge factor should be a very high actually, but it is always not possible to have such a high gauge factor, but generally people take it more than 2 or something or mostly 2. So, principle of the use of strain gauge for measuring cutting force is shown in this figure. Now, due to the vertical force P z the two upper gauges T 1 and T 2 sense tensile and C 1 and C 2 they sense compressive. This time I hold it in T 1, T 2, C 1, C 2 just to emphasize that it is tension and this is compression. However, all the four gauges are usually identical and attain the same magnitude of strain, tension or compression. So, the magnitude wise is same, but it is positive here and this is negative strain here. So, then the four strain gauge resistance R1, R2, R3 and R4 are connected to form feet stone bridge. So, in this case may be if it is a tension then R1 may increase, R3 may increase, R4 and R2 may decrease. Under null or balanced condition the following thing will hold this you can even in your uh, plus 2 level also you have studied that uh, about feet stone bridge that if there is a if it is totally balanced in that case R 1 by R 2 will be equal to R 4 by R 3. So, it is totally balanced in that case. Now, so in the beginning it is totally balanced may be all resistances are equal. Now, once I put the force then these strains will change. So, it will become disbalanced and then we will be able to measure it, but, but for then also. So, one thing is that we can how to measure that small thing may be I can put another resistance variable resistance R B which will balance that thing I can have even in the beginning also suppose they may not be balanced properly. So, you have to do some adjustment that for that adjustment I can put some R B type of resistor and I can actually change it this one. So, that it becomes balanced. So, for balancing we put generally additional variable resistance the straining of the gauges produces a voltage output delta V 
under the condition that R1 by R2 will not be equal to R4 by R3 and then in that case delta V will be generally proportional to this one. It will be Ks times E g epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 minus epsilon 4. You can see epsilon 1 and epsilon 2, uh, 3 means these two diagonal uh, strain gauges they are having additive effect whereas epsilon 2 and epsilon 4 they are having subtractive effect. So, epsilon 1 and epsilon 3 are in tension while epsilon 2 and epsilon 4 are in compression. So, they further add that thing. So, suppose strain in all the gauges is same and it is epsilon. So, whole thing becomes but this is plus epsilon and epsilon 2 is minus epsilon. So, plus and minus will get added. So, you will get 4 epsilon. So, it will be when all the gauges are identical and subjected to strains of the same magnitude then delta V becomes basically delta V will become 4 times K s E and then I am putting it like a gauge factor here because this is delta V in fact it will become uh, if I have identical this one. So, delta V will become 4 times K s E g gauge factor I have written and this is epsilon ok. So, that epsilon is missing here that epsilon has to be there otherwise this is the thing that means delta v is proportional to 4 k s e g into epsilon that has to be there and then it is like this. So, this is one method here we have arranged in this way we have increased its sensitivity in fact, 4 times if we just measure that one strain. Now, we can measure cutting forces using pressure caused by the forces also. We can measure the pressure. So, this type of transducer function in two ways one is force creates hydraulic pressure. We can put a hydraulic cylinder on top of this, there will be a piston, and if we put some support, put a force here, naturally this will produce pressure and that pressure will be monitored directly by pressure gauge. That is one method of hydraulic system, but it may become very cumbersome. So, that is one thing. Another most popular is that force presses a piezoelectric crystals. Some there are some crystals which have got that property that they will produce a proportional electromotive force by this relation EMF will be lambda times T p lambda is the voltage sensitivity of the crystal, T is the thickness of the crystal and P is the pressure exerted by the force. So, it will be lambda is T P. So, this is what voltage sensitivity T is the thickness and P is the uh, thickness means this is thickness from here to here. So, we can have this type of arrangement. Now, it is proportional to thickness and P so, this, this we can measure. So, most of the dynamometers are produced and they are having this type of particularly Kisler is making this dynamometer, other companies also sometimes making this type of dynamometers, they are based on the piezoelectric crystals. Now, let us consider design consideration for tool force dynamometer. One is we need high sensitivity so that we can measure precise measurement that means it is decided by gauge factor. Then rigidity it should be sufficiently rigid to withstand the force without causing much deflection or deformation as these may affect the machining condition if it is not rigid. So, that is why there is a conflict you want to have if you want that uh, high sensitivity that means you should have more deflection of that particular tool, but if it is a more deflection then cutting condition will itself will be destroyed. So, that is why you have to make a balance, you have to optimize here. Then rigidity to withstand the force without causing much deflection or deformation as these may affect the machining condition. Then cross sensitivity that means, it is if an I am measuring the vertical force, it should not affect the reading of the horizontal force meter. It should not affect that wheat stone bridge which is for horizontal one. So, class sensitivity to ensure that the measurement of a force does not affect the measurement of other forces. 
stability it should be stable against humidity and temperature if temperature changes humidity changes it should not happen that today the temperature is 30 degree and tomorrow it will be 45 degree then the reading will be different. Time response the transducer should not have any delay in the readout as uh, shown in the figure that means there is a response time quickly I must be able to change. So, this is response here and this is input. So, it has reached here this much time it took to reach that value. So, this response time should be less frequency response it needs to be high enough. So, that the measurement or the readings are not affected by vibration with a reasonably wide range of working frequency that means in these frequencies it can measure and consistency reliable function over long service life and economy needs to be compact and inexpensive. So, basic working principle and construction of piezoelectric type 3D dynamometer which is like crystal is making in that what is there piezoelectric crystals especially quartz are used for making multi component dual force dynamometers. One piezoelectric crystal is quartz by they generate EMF proportionality with longitudinal compressive force and then shear force also in some preferential direction. That means, in some particular planes if there is a shear then the voltage uh, charge may be generated. So, it is a typical that piezoelectric dynamometer is shown here this I have taken photograph from my workshop and this is uh, uh, Walter P. Kisler was one a Swiss engineer who invented charge amplifier in 1950 by putting piezoelectric crystals and uh, along with before that um, along with Sondergar he had invented four sensor in 1944. So, Kisler himself founded that company which makes now Kisler dynamometer. Now, this is these are basically called charge amplifier because because of the compression of the piezoelectric uh, crystal charge is generated, but that may be small. So, you have to amplify it and then properly you have to measure also. So, complete amplifying and uh, uh, this one uh, measurement is done by charge meters. So, these are charge amplifier and charge meters combined for Kisler dynamometers this we have taken and then uh, quartz crystals these crystals are sensitive in one direction hence for measuring solar components you need solar sensor because it is uh, if you want to measure horizontal force then it should be put in that direction. So, chemical formula for quartz is SiO2 and it is second most abundant metal on earth uh, you can say that it is um, like this and then charge amplifier we need to amplify this thing. Now, piezoelectricity definition is that it is electrical polarization in a substance especially certain crystals resulting from the application of mechanical stress. Now, uh, we have to we have to put some pretension in dynamometers it is carried out to make response linear that means initially you have to apply some load suppose suppose relation between the force and this one is like this like this ok. So, that means uh, let me make in exaggerated way that means it may be like this and then it becomes linear that means after certain force it will become linear. So, it is better that you put that much force so that your response does not become non-linear and that is why we already put some load that is called pre-tensioning of the dynamometer. Charge amplifiers they convert the charge into a proportional voltage and it comprises one inverting amplifier with high amplification and capacitive feedback. Okay, so, these type of things are good. Time constant refers to the time by which the voltage has dropped to 37 percent of the starting value. Suppose some voltage was there how much time it will take to. Time constant influences the frequency range of the measurement longer the time constant lower is the lower limit frequency and longer will be usable measurement time. So, uh, time constant has to be selected longer time constant is preferred for static force measurement then you need this one and drift refers to unwanted change in output signal over a prolonged period 
if you adjust that after some time you see automatically readings have changed that is because of drift. Humidity and temperature control may also be required. In general the specification of this may be general specifications may be that uh, range means how in which range it can measure then it can be overload then it can be means how much overload actually design was for suppose 30 Newton, but it is measuring suppose by mistake load has become 32 Newton, then also it should take up that much threshold means minimum quantity which it can measure say 0 0.01 Newton. Okay. Less than that there will be nothing. Na. After 0 0.01 only it will know that there is something applied. Sensitivity it can be measured in pico coulomb per Newton, pico is 1 into 10 to the power minus 12. Linearity that means percentage of full range say 0.1 percent. Okay. So, this is a linearity means how much is the deviation suppose your linearity suppose percentage of this one. So, actually suppose there is no deviation then percentage of full change uh, range is uh, 0, but suppose there is a 0.1 percent deviation from linearity that type of thing he, here it is written hysteresis should be small hysteresis means if I apply the force in one way then I apply the force in the other direction. So, then there should not be a loading and unloading then there should not be difference much difference in the readings class stock means it is same as this class sensitivity rigidity can be specified in terms of kilo Newton per micrometer natural frequencies are so important because it should not be coincide with that operating temperature range then capacitance insulation resistance should be high protection class what type of protection class is there for your wires etcetera so that there is no uh, accident then weight and then clamping area and what type of connections are there. So, it is the we have uh, actually measured in our uh, workshop cutting forces we have got we are doing double tool turning one tool is here one tool is here now distance between the two tools is, tools is separated it is shown here and we are putting these two dynamometers and they are connected by cables that cable is going into charge amplifier and this one. So, this we are doing and then typical readings from dynamometers we are getting like this see cutting force from the front tool it came like this more than 200 and something less than 300 something 225 or something average, but there is some fluctuation also means forces do fluctuate in a dynamic manner and maybe I may be interested in having the mean value. Similarly, if you see the, uh, in another tool the forces are fluctuating like this and mean value is fairly constant more or less fluctuations are less you are doing like this here and then force can also be measured by the measurement of motor currents they can be measured I can also measure by measuring the motor current that can be one method. In fact, there are many other methods for measuring for example, it can be measured by current it is called indirect method it is easy to achieve uh, cost effective, but disadvantage is that time consuming unsuitable for multi axis cutting process you will not know that which is uh, uh, this current is changing because of which thing then without consideration of the frictional behavior of the machine tools that may also affect then voltage is also indirect method and there are some advantage easy, easy to conversion and processing, but limited to stable conditions it is susceptible to electromagnetic interface a strain gauge I have told this is called direct method in this simple construction high and adjustable resolution high reliability, but it is higher power consumption rigid and fragile and it is uh, and reproducibility is very difficult. So, capacitive one is uh, temperature uh, very good on a here advantages are there, but disadvantages there there may be stray capacitance it is sensitive to temperature then up to electronic may be there good reliability is there wide measurement range good applicability to workshop condition, but it is hard to construct dense up to what uh, electronic uh, sensor uh, system. Then piezoelectric I have already told high frequency response and high dynamic range is there suitable for doing the dynamic measurement, but uh, higher accuracy and final resolution 
high sensitivity and stiffness, but there is a charge leakage problem is there. In my workshop many times the work dynamometer was not functioning prop, um, uh, properly, then poor spatial resolution, deterioration of voltage or drifts in the presence of static forces. So, these type of things are there. So, you are quite aware about that dynamometers are very expensive and mostly they are used in the ripe conditions also. So, uh, sometimes these measures like current measurement technique can be suitable if you want to do measurement and simultaneously you want to do control. So, today I will stop at this stage because um, I have told you about the cutting force measurement and we will uh, study another topic in the next class.